Hello, sleepyheads. I didn't expect to have any time to film today, but I ended up coming into some time, so I thought it would be nice to spend a few minutes together. And while we are here together, I thought I could nibble on some leftover Halloween candy. So here I have Twizzlers Twists. This is just the classic strawberry flavor, and I always just knew this candy as Twizzlers. But I suppose they added the twists because they need to differentiate from some of their other products now. They have the pull and peel, which I have here. Some people really don't like Twizzlers. They much prefer red vines. Um, I think red vines taste like cough syrup. I'm sorry my jaw pops so much. especially prone to popping when I'm eating something really tough, really chewy. So this is one of those other products I was talking about. This is a Twizzlers Pull and Peel. It also comes in a cherry flavor, but I think that tastes bad. I like the watermelon. So I really wanted to say thank you to everyone who left really sweet comments on um, on yesterday's video, on my last video. Um, I was really nervous to post that one because once I'd edited it, I was just worried about how some of the things I was saying came off, especially if it sounded like I was griping or complaining or talking too much about veganism or being too confrontational at the end. And I certainly didn't want anyone tuning in and out and misconstruing what I was saying about um, how many subscribers I have. I think if you watch the video all the way through, then you, you will understand my feelings about it. But if you're just looking at the title or just clicking through or tuning in and out, I was a little, I was a little worried about it, um, about being misunderstood. And I could have filmed a little bit more sort of interjecting, but I'm trying to be a little less worried about outcome and just relax a little bit. So um, it was really nice to see that for the most part, everyone was really supportive. And I mean, I did get a few dislikes, but it comes with, that was a risk I was willing to take. I mean, that has to be a risk you're willing to take anytime you post anything to YouTube because I've seen videos of people talking about their cancer getting dislikes. So the internet is weird, but that being said, there were things I was talking about in the video that I could understand someone being annoyed by. So um, I was nervous to post. Mostly, I just wanted to clarify that um, I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. Um, I know I can be a bit capricious and I can stop posting for a while and that can be annoying. Maybe you don't mind at all, but I remember a few years ago, there was a YouTuber, an ASM artist, um, whom I really liked. I think her name was Eliza, and she was Australian, and um, I think her handle, her account name was Eliza ASMR, Eliza ASMR, 
something like that. And I really liked her videos, but it always felt like she was going back and forth. Back and forth about whether or not she wanted to keep posting. And she would post videos and then delete them. And that was disappointing because I just really liked her voice and her mouth sounds and I think she had braces and um, she would do really lo-fi videos. Um, I liked her videos so much that I downloaded them and I put them on a playlist, but um, since then she's gone completely off YouTube and deleted all her videos. So ultimately I deleted them all too because, you know, if someone doesn't want to be on the internet anymore, then I want to support that. And she may not really want people, you know, continuing to view or possess videos of her, her voice, her likeness, thoughts she had five years ago. So. Um, I know the internet is kind of the wild west. And my dad would always say, mother server never forgets. It's a little hard though, it feels like, um, it's a lot of pressure that previous generations never had to deal with, that you're so well documented if you venture at all out into the internet. I suppose it's a risk you're assuming, but it would be nice if we could arrive at a place where, um, the way we treated someone's likeness, you know, um, videos of them and stuff like that was a little more consensual. Someone was allowed to withdraw consent and be like, I don't want those on the internet anymore. And it wasn't like tough cookies <laughs> in perpetuity, forever tough cookies. I have a friend who is not on social media at all. And so if you take a picture of her, she's very clear. She's like, is that going on social media? Because I don't put my face on social media. Um, and sometimes she'll let you if she likes a picture of herself or something like that, but um, she's been doing this for years and um, it kind of got me thinking about that before the public conversation shifted toward this question. I already had a friend who was helping me be, helping me be cognizant of it in order to respect her wishes. So next up, a very sticky airhead. I bought a big bag of candy to do a scavenger hunt and um, like I found a mix that was vegan, a variety pack and um, it was just so sticky inside. Every single piece is super sticky on the wrapper. Um, I'm going to abandon the topic of conversation I was just on, um, not conversation, but the topic I was just on, I was talking about, um, I don't know, um, privacy and the internet and, um, deciding you don't want things on the internet anymore. I feel like so often in these videos, in these rambles, I wander into lines of thought that are really big, um, things to which I could devote, you know, entire videos and then I get overwhelmed. So I go, so yeah, so yeah, anyway. But I did specifically intend to talk about more positive things in this video. Not that my last video was outright negative, but just more relaxing stuff. So I wanted to talk about hobbies. Um, I touched on my hobbies a little bit especially in the Q&A, but I thought of a few more. Also, sorry that my nails are so short. Um, I'm growing them out. If you don't know, I destroyed them the week of the election to a painful extent. So, mm. so before I jump into talking about hobbies, just wanted to update you on my ongoing classic movies viewing or movie marathon. Every night, I'm watching a different old movie. Um, this week I've been specifically focusing on Hitchcock. So we started watching Young and Innocent. It's from 1937. And, um, we just weren't in the mood for something that felt, 
um, I don't know, had some of the styling of like the silent film era. You know, it's not a silent film, but it had those trappings. So we moved on and we watched Psycho, which I had never seen before. And we had already watched Rear Window, and I'd only ever watched the first act. And um, I think we plan to watch Vertigo, North by Northwest, and Rebecca next. And I've already seen Shadow of a Doubt, and I grew up watching Dial M for murder. I'm gesticulating a lot with this airhead. <laughs> And I am going ahead with Thanksgiving food prep. I feel like any videos I take of the food I make are not appealing looking, but... I'm not going to finish that airhead. Um, I just can't get through airheads like I used to be able to. As a kid, I could eat four or five in a row, especially because I did like all the flavors except maybe orange, but I liked grape, I liked blue raspberry, I liked cherry, I loved white mystery, and I think, um, I think we had strawberry too whenever we got variety packs. I haven't seen strawberry airheads in a while, and I loved watermelon. Oh, and green apple. I think there were a lot of flavors. Am I misremembering that? Were there just some special edition ones? But, um, yeah, I could really make my way through a pack of airheads. And these days, it's not the same, so I'm gonna move on. Um, but yeah, I have been doing Thanksgiving prep as well. Um, I decided against the cinnamon apples because, um, the only vegan brand of, kind of, red-hot equivalent candy is Brax. I think that's how it's pronounced. It's B-R-A-C-H apostrophe S. And the grocery store didn't have the regular ones, it just had the, the sugar-free ones. And I've always been told to avoid sugar-free candies because they can upset some people's stomachs. So, oh I didn't show you, this is just a good old-fashioned Jolly Rancher. I think my favorite flavors. I've always been torn with Jolly Ranchers um, over whether or not I prefer watermelon or cherry because I like them both so much. I think, if I'm honest with myself, I think I like cherry the most. And that's probably the only candy for which that's true because a lot of cherry flavored things taste like cough medicine. So perhaps I should have. started with this. Oh well. So yes, I'm gonna be doing lots of Thanksgiving prep today and some cleaning. I always enjoy a holiday more, um, or a trip more, um, even just a regular day more. If I can get my apartment all spick and span before it starts. I was wondering whether spick and span makes a nice trigger word or trigger phrase. Spick. I haven't even finished my Jolly Ranger yet, so this is me doubling up. Oh, there it goes. So, so I think I was talking about cleaning. Not that I consider cleaning a hobby, but I do make quite a hobby out of um, organizing and finding better solutions for things, trying to streamline my household and make it more livable, more laid back, especially because of my OCD. I think I've talked about this a little bit in the answers component of the Q&A. So for example, um, I've had a little more financial flexibility recently, so I got a new bedspread and I was excited about that because it's kind of a dupe, a low-end dupe for um, a kind of comforter that I really like from Urban Outfitters. They sell these tufted chenille comforters that are really hefty and cozy. But 
that I didn't want to support Urban Outfitters anymore, even though I have worked at Urban Outfitters. I felt that I would much rather support a company like Target than a company like Urban Outfitters. I think that Robert Hain is still the president of the company, and they also own Anthropology and um, Terrain and Free People. Um, I always worked with really great people, but that being said, the vibes from corporate were always really sleazy, and it is a conservative company. It does put a lot of soft money into the GOP, or at least historically it has. So, um, it's making money off a largely liberal demographic, and um, I think Robert Hayne always took pleasure in that. Um, and I totally believe everything that I've heard about how free people is run and, and its racist practices, but so I decided I'd much rather support a company like Target, and I saved myself a lot of money as well. And um, I also got a new stool so it doesn't creak anymore. So that's pretty nice. Just a plain white vanity stool. It's that phone call guy. Um, so, yes, I like to research things a lot. Um, right now I'm having a lot of fun. I said that my skincare routine, I was worried that it wasn't as vegan friendly as I thought it was. And it wasn't as bad as I thought. Most of the products are vegan, um, but um, a lot of them aren't manufactured by cruelty-free companies, or at least a lot of companies say they're cruelty-free, but they're not certified. You know, it's kind of a meaningless, a meaningless designation, um, unless it's like Leaping Bunny or something like that. Animal testing is so antithetical to veganism that, that it seems really beside the point to keep products in my regimen just because they fit the bill on a technicality. So I've been really enjoying finding dupes doing my research. Um, at first it was, at first it was annoying and I was just worried, I think, that I wasn't going to find things that worked for me. But, um, eventually I usually, um, get on board with the possibilities of a challenge. So, um, I've been having fun, funny enough. It's a completely different tune than, than two days ago when last I spoke to you about it because even though the video went out yesterday, I recorded it two days ago. So, I guess three days ago now. So, my tune has changed and, um, I'm having a lot of fun. I think I had to rip the band-aid off and see how bad it was and deal with that guilt, but now I'm super excited to go through my whole routine and try to find good dupes. Um, so if that's not a hobby, I don't know what to call it. And obviously I love watching movies. I know that doesn't really count as a hobby, but I will look up as much as I can about the movie after the fact trivia, just goofs, behind-the-scenes stuff, um, and also learn more about the world of the film, like if it has a bigger backstory, you know? Like if it has a bigger world, like a lot of Ridley Scott movies, um, anything Stephen King. Um, so it was really fun after watching Psycho to watch as a kind of companion, as a kind of companion piece. Um, a YouTube video about um, the psychological concept of the uncanny and how it factors into Psycho and how Alfred Hitchcock went about integrating that theme into the imagery of the film. So, another hobby that I have is doing crosswords. I love doing crosswords. Um, I grew up with a sister and a brother who both really like doing crosswords just out of the newspaper, so quite a bit harder than doing them on apps these days. But now I do crosswords via the New York Times app, and I try to get a streak by doing as many days in a row as possible without checking or getting hints or anything like that. I just could spend the whole day doing crosswords. 
um, another hobby. Um, I really like... I like to play video games. Not all video games, but if I get really into one, then um, I'm a happy camper for a long time. So, growing up, I really liked James Bond games. When I was little, we had one called Nightfire. That wasn't so appropriate for me, but I was already watching all the old James Bond movies, so beyond a certain point, James Craig was already James Bond, but I think for a long time growing up, I still thought of Pierce Brosnan as James Bond, so it took me a while to make that switch. I don't know. I'm a loyalist about weird things. Um, so I loved that, and I loved the newer Lara Croft. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if there's been another Tomb Raider since, but roughly five years ago they released one, and um, I liked playing that one a lot. Right now, I like playing a game. It's only a few years old, um, because I will play like really old games, like like, I love the N64 Mario Kart. I guess, like, old is such a relative term, that's why I try to be sensitive when I use it, when I'm like, old movies, because, you know, for some people, it's, it's weird to even think of them that way. Um, but yeah, I do like a game that's only a few years old. It's on the Xbox One, and it's the Lord of the Rings game. Um, I think right now I'm playing in the gameplay that's called, like, Shadow of War because there are lots of iterations of this game. They made improvements and released new versions so you can play the different versions. And I think there are also several storylines, like several different games you can play, even from the same release. But I'm not sure if that's true. I just know there are lots of different ways to play it, and, um, and it's a lot of fun. I'm having a lot of fun with it right now. I think I'm an annoying person with whom to play video games because I'm not really that into beating the game. I'll just spend a lot of time in the world of the game. So I'll spend a lot of time riding Epona instead of instead of completing missions or, you know, going through the levels of Zelda. This is me talking about Ocarina of Time. Um, and in this Lord of the Rings game, um, I like to just kill orcs. And not really progressing in the larger game. So, but I'm just trying to have fun. The last thing I want to do is bring perfectionism or goal-mindedness or results-mindedness into something that I'm doing to relax and to have fun. I don't want to engage that part of my brain. So, Now, this isn't really a hobby at all, but lately when I've been putting my makeup on, I think I'm making more mistakes with my makeup lately because I'm getting impatient. I'm getting a little burned out doing it every day um, because, you know, for a long time, because for a long time I had lash extensions and it just made things a lot easier. So, so in order to keep myself entertained and calm while I'm doing my makeup, I will watch Grey's Anatomy. Um, I've never watched it all the way through. I've stopped at various points when I thought it got really silly, but now I've learned to just stick with it. Some episodes are going to be sillier than others. I think that the patients are reliably horrible actors, um, so I really prefer when the drama stays between the surgeons. Um, but, you know, in terms of the silliness of it, it's, um, it's a melodrama, you know? A melodrama can't really jump the shark, because melodramas tend to be outlandish with out-of-this-world stakes anyway. You know, the melodrama, originally it was stories of swashbucklers and damsels in distress taken hostage by nefarious railroad tycoons, and I'm just riffing, but um, they were meant as entertainment for the working class. 
So they were meant to have big cathartic payoff and not require you to think or fret too much. Just, just super immersive, super cathartic, and often with happy endings. So, um, very different than, you know, the naturalism of Ibsen, the realism of Chekhov. I have that backwards. Um, yeah, it's not supposed to be like that. So, I've learned to just keep an open mind and I'm really enjoying it. Um, speaking of plays, another hobby I have is a group of friends and I, we will, um, we will do play readings together virtually. And it's really nice because we get assigned different parts and then you get to every month to read a new play that you wouldn't otherwise have read. And there's much more immediacy to your, um, understanding of it because you're having the parts played out. So, um, it's much more, it's much more intelligible on first reading that way. So, it's a lot of fun. Oh, and I wanted to say one other thing about Grey's Anatomy. Um, it has great sounds. Like, it's not an all-over ASMR-inducing experience, but whatever Foley artist they have, um, the sounds from the surgery, the metal instruments, um, you know, people picking up and putting down phone receivers, and especially um, the doctors and nurses' shoes, their sneakers on the linoleum floor. The footsteps in that show always sound super nice, so it does add a little something for people like us. Um, also, Grace Kelly's bracelets in Rear Window. Those were some nice sounds. So I'm going to stop there. I think I've already told you about most of my other hobbies. I like to write. I like to dabble in modeling. I like to dabble in being the photographer, so having other people model for me. And this also is stretching it as a hobby, but I do like to go out to eat um, and find new fun vegan options. Like recently I found an all-vegan ice cream shop near me, and they make milkshakes. And they have a whole menu of specialty milkshakes they tend to be too decadent for me. I don't really like whipped cream and super rich things, but what I have discovered is that I can ask for a vanilla milkshake with butterfingers. So they'll blend up these vegan butterfinger dupes called Thumbs Up. Um, they're by Gomax, which is a vegan candy company, and they taste just like butterfingers. And when I get them mixed up in a vanilla milkshake, it tastes just, just, just like a Butterfinger McFlurry. I think when you put that much thought and effort into your order, it almost counts as a hobby. Especially because um, finding vegan options can be like one big scavenger hunt. It can be fun if you, if you let it be. Um, I think I like eating out so much because um, I don't love cooking. I have cooked a lot for work in the last year or so, two years, I guess, prior to COVID. That is, it's something that really feels obligatory to me as opposed to fun. So, um, it's not to say I can't have fun with it, but I only have it in me to make maybe one or two more elaborate meals a week. The other reason I like to eat out so much is um, growing up, my mom was not a fan. Growing up, my mom was not a fan of eating out. Um, her father was a restaurateur, and I think she ate out a lot. She would go to the diner that he owned. It might have been a restaurant, but I think it was, I mean, a diner is a restaurant, but it might not have been a diner. But she would go to his restaurant after school, after cheerleading and all her activities, and she would do her homework at the counter, and they would all eat dinner there a lot of nights. and. I think she, and I think she would have rather just been at home. So, the grass is always greener on the other side, you know, so. Because conversely, I always wanted to eat out growing up. So, there you go. Okay, I'm gonna go now. So I hope you like this impromptu video, and I hope you get lots and lots of REM sleep tonight. And I hope all your dreams are sweet. 
And once again, I hope you have a very happy Thanksgiving if you want to donate in some way to the Indigenous American community. I'm going to post that link again. I meant to mention it in my last video, but I guess I cut it out somehow. If that's something you have capacity to do, I think that would be a great thing to do in light of the holiday. So, happy Thanksgiving. I'll talk to you soon.